<clears throat> okay so uh, let's get started uh, in the last class we started looking at uh, uh, the notion of uh, what is known as marco decision process okay so the problem setup consists of the following right the first thing is the set of states so s uh, let's assume that s is finite uh, although uh, the uh, the general ndp setting you don't need this okay the second thing uh, we would like to assume is the following so you have the set of states and you have set of actions you know the um the set of actions may not be uh, fine, uh, finite but let's assume this be finite so by the way these two assumptions are not really required but i am just keeping this as separate okay so in general we don't need this okay now um what is the dynamics here you are in a particular state let's say you are in a particular state st at time t and you take an action let's say at then you go to a state st plus 1 okay so so st and st plus 1 belong to uh, s the set of states okay so what forms a markov chain so essentially there is a transition matrix matrix which is the probability of you being in some state s dash given you were in state s and you have taken an action here okay so there is a transition probability uh, involved so this transition probability um, is what um, follows the markov uh, chain okay in other words i can um, write this for example as p um i go from s to s dash when i take an action a yeah, right this is what it is okay is this fine now the third fourth thing uh, to keep things general there is a there could be an uncertainty in the reward itself right for example you are in some state you take an action a and then you go to some other state and there is a corresponding reward right these rewards as a function of states and action uh, could be deterministic or random depending on the application right so in general it could be random so uh, there is um, um randomness involved in uh, the reward itself so the reward um itself is basically um uh, probability of yeah, i think uh, one of you jayant can you please uh, mute the phone, microphone yeah um so uh, there is reward let's say you get reward r when you are in state s and you take an action a then there is a reward r so there is a distribution on the rewards as well is that fine so this is for every s in s and a in a okay this is the setup is is there any questions regarding setup for example in the previous case the set of states could be uh, the set of positions that the robot uh, can uh, be in set of actions could be uh, the, the for example moving forward backward right left with certain velocity etc right so transition probability so essentially you are in state s dash given that you are in, you were in state s and take an action a for example you are in some position and you took an action a um ideally it should go to an s dash which is deterministic function of s and a but because of some measurement errors and um, etc the uh, actual s dash could be different from what you observe so there is a randomness here and similarly reward uh, so given the state s and an action uh, you think that you will move closer or whatever so there is could be a measurement noise again in terms of distance so there is a uh, randomness here okay there are other applications also okay um, not just uh, the uh, the robot example that i gave in the last class okay now what is the goal here the goal is to devise a set of actions that will maximize the average reward okay is that fine so let's look at one stage uh, reward so meaning um, so time is discrete 
okay so it's a discrete time process uh, time is let's say m you are at time m and um, you are in state let's say x I'll, if i denote the states as xm as i so you are in state i and let's say uh, take an action let's say a belonging to a right take an action uh, a belonging to a then you will end up in some other state and there is a reward right so what is the reward so then the reward would be is what so you have uh, r okay this is the reward for you being in state i and taking an action a right this is the reward but if you look at this randomness right if you are in state s and take an action a the reward r that you get could be random so you have to take expectation over that distribution as well this is the reward that you get of you, you being in uh, state i and take an action a is this fine in fact in the previous class we wrote this as r i k k was the action and Uh, the reward was deterministic there therefore it, we didn't take any expectation is this fine everything hmm? sir but for the fixed action sir if we just uh -huh. uh, if you fix the action then the reward will uh -huh. be uh, reward will also be fixed sir not necessarily right um, uh, it could be uh, for example uh, let let me give you a concrete example uh, let's say you are um, you are asked to design um, let's say advertisements right for example you get advertisements on your uh, facebook page and many other websites right so okay, so how would you advertise so advert putting a particular advertisement on your whatever portal is the action right so suppose i put a particular uh, advertisement what is the reward the reward is the click rate so basically if you click it i'll call it as reward 1 okay i'll get probably 0.01 dollars for that right so if you look at it like that then the action is placing the ad on your portal or your uh, facebook page you clicking is the reward so you clicking or not clicking is random right given the action that i have taken and the state you are in right yes sir yeah yeah so in that case it could be random okay, okay sir yes sir yeah fine so now this is the reward that you get but as a consequence of you taking an action in state i will take you to some other state right so what is that what is that state so essentially i wrote it as pss dash of here right so there is a chance that you being in state i can go to state j with probability pij when you take an action a right so this is the transition probability so whenever you reach state j let's assume that the return is vj okay so that means uh, you know essentially um, this is the terminal state so i'll start at time step m being in state i and i'll end at m plus 1 so when you are at m plus 1 whatever the state you you end up being in there is a reward and the reward is vj or all j right in fact j belong to s is this fine this is uh, the yes Sir, so here R is not the uh, reward. Uh, hmm? uh, sir, you said uh, J is the terminal state and V J is the corresponding reward. Uh, so then, what is R? R is also reward. Uh, R is also a reward. So essentially, in this case, what happens is I don't take any action, right? It's almost like R of J comma null. I don't take any action. I end up there. So I just stop. Okay. Uh, okay. Okay. For example, you are taking a sequence of action in your robot example. After some point, you stop. You don't take any action. That means you are at some state and you have a reward, and the reward is constant, right? The distance. That's it. It will. It will be fixed. Do you agree? Mm, yes, sir. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Hello, This sir. is the uh, terminal reward. Yes. Sir. Uh, so the second term is basically like you are saying that we are reaching the final state and we are stopping there. So is to now I wouldn't call it as a final state whatever the state I end up being in I'll have some reward and I'll stop there that's all right it's a one step Do you agree isn't it expectation huh? hello sir is it is summation hello yes yes so is this summation not covered in a, in the expectation no no so 
this expectation is uh, the expectation of the rewards itself so if you are in state i and action a the reward that you get itself is random okay given by probability of r given s comma a right there is a randomness there also and you are averaging over all those randomness right given that you take an action a when you are in state i there is a reward which is random i'm going to take the uh, average over all that in fact it depends on both i and a okay the state in which you are in and the action that you have taken so the expected value of r of i comma a depends on both i and a it's not average over i and a it's average over some randomness that is independent of that is that fine also uh, why yes, there is a summation in second term now if you are in state i you can go to uh, state j with certain probability right <clears throat> Do you so agree? Like we are summing for all the states, right? For every j. Yeah. So if you are in state i, right? Now you take an action a, right? It can go to any state, right? One or two or and so on. It can go to any state. Let's say there are m states. You have m, right? Of being. So there is a probability, right? So this probability is p i one of a. This is p i two of a. And so on, P I M of A, right? So there's a probability associated with uh, you taking an action, uh, being in state I, and you transit to some other state. There's a probability. So with this probability, I go to that state, and with the moment I end up in some state, let's say three, there is a terminal reward that I get of being in that state forever. Is that fine? Is yes. Clear sir. or uh, no? Clear, right? Okay. Yes, clear. Uh, okay. So now uh, let's look at. Uh, so this is what you get, right? Now maybe um, let me denote this by some v of. So it depends on what. It depends on i. Depends on action y, right? Nothing else. Do you agree? It depends on where you started and depends on what the action that you have taken. That's all. and let's assume uh, just to denote let's assume that this is one step okay this is called the value function okay I'll, uh, okay so i'll just write i will call this as value function now how do you choose the action so suppose you are designing a system wherein you have to look at uh, maximize one step reward so what is it that you will do essentially you will maximize the value with respect to all action a right do you agree with that do you agree so now choose an action a such that a as follows okay so arg max or all action a belong to a value of this thing is this fine this is how you get action a star that's the of course this is one step right so uh, i'll not write it as one a star so this is one step do you agree with this everyone hmm is that okay yes sir so that means uh, we want maximum reward uh, right yeah so this gives me the value is the reward that you get if you start in state i and take action a right one step reward now you have to take an action a that maximizes this right so that will give you the maximum reward one step do you agree mm, yes sir yeah. okay now uh, let's look at uh, two step now okay so let's look at two step case and then we will generalize so now what happens you will start in some state let's say i okay you take an action a and you will end up in some state j right so suppose you are in i and you take an action a you will go to some state j and as a consequence of it you will get some reward right which is ri of a now subsequently you can you have to take one more action right you will go from here to here let's say some other state l for you taking an action a dash right this is how the transition is 
do you agree so what is markov for example if you are in state l so essentially given the past state and the action that you have taken the future state is independent of all the past actions and the state that's how the markov chain uh, evolves that's where the markov chain or markov property comes into play now suppose you are in a state i and take an action you end up in state j and now after this what to do well it depends on this right you know how to solve one step right so you take an action a you will end up in some state now it's like one step uh, um, problem right you know how to solve that supposing you take that action and you will have you will maximize one step right um of course if you take a different action being in state i you will end up in a different state and different then you know what is the action that you have to take when you start in state i state j okay is that fine okay now let's look at what is it that uh, let's write this right so what is the reward so let me write it um like this okay so like v1 of i comma a i'll write it as it's two step i start at state i and i start with an action a okay is that fine well i'll add one more uh, thing which is a dash i'll tell you why okay so first of all i was in state i i took an action a i got a reward i comma a and expected value do you agree plus okay now i am in state i i go to state j when i take an action a right but whenever i am in state j i will take an action a dash okay if i take an action a dash what will happen it's one step right i am in state j and i'll take an action a dash i know what is the value right so what is the value it's v1 of i a i a dash a dash and i have to sum over all j right so this gives me the value or the reward that you get if you are in time slot m and take an action immediately a immediately and subsequently take an action a dash right that's what it says so should it be v1 of uh, j a dash huh so shouldn't the last term ah, be v1 correct, of yeah. j a dash you are right good yes you are in state j so it be v1 of j comma a dash right do you agree but uh, i have to optimize over a and a dash now right it's two step okay so what is the problem problem would be maximize or all action a comma a dash in a v2 of i comma a comma a dash right so let's look at what is this so see this is same as maximize or all a a dash belong to a this particular thing right expected value of r comma phi comma a plus summation or all j pi j of action a v1 of j comma action a dash right now a dash the first term is independent of a dash right the only thing that depends on the on a dash is the second term so i can pull in the maximization inside so it's maximize or all a belong to a expected value of r of i comma a plus summation or all j pi j of a right now v1 of j comma a dash is which depends on a dash therefore i have to maximize that if i maximize or all a dash v1 of j comma a dash is what Yes. So a dash is star. No. Uh, what is okay? So now I have to. Um, okay. Let me add a notation here. Okay. So this implies uh, I'll write v one star of i. Okay. So what is this? This is nothing but v one of i comma a star. That means if I use the optimal action a star. being in state i the re average reward which is the best average reward that i get is v1 v1 star of i okay with this notation i can write this as v1 star of i okay 
now if this solution for example um, you know the optimal a for this is let's say a star and substitute it back what do i get here this would be this would be so last term again it should be v1 hmm? j like last term v1 star of j yeah you are right man i keep doing this mistake okay so this would be what two step optimal being in state i right i start in state i two step reward when i take optimal action do you agree with this hmm? yes sir huh? okay okay now um okay so uh, now if i generalize this what do we get if i generalize this hmm suppose now we started at m looked at m plus 1 and m plus 2 right two step now suppose i generalize this and i want to start at m m plus 1 i'll go all the way till m plus n minus 1 okay that means i'll take n steps right so what do you think is the average reward well uh, i can go till m plus n minus 2 and then it's like one step or i can go i can start here go here and then i'll take an optimal step right it turns out well uh, that okay easy okay this is generalization is easy we have v okay in general okay if you take the nth step right so uh one thing to note here is that none of these depend on time step m right do you do you agree with that does it depend on time step m no right no where there is time step m m could be 100000 that is day after tomorrow or today or yesterday it doesn't matter right so it only depends on what is the initial state and after that how you proceed okay so now how do i write this how do i write this this in general i can write uh, this as v so v1 v2 so we are going n step star of being in i is nothing but max or all action a expected value of r of i comma a plus summation or all j belong into s p i j of action a times the value v n minus 1 star of j okay this time i didn't make a mistake okay uh remember this is n minus 1 okay so you have to take n minus 1 steps subsequently to reach there so there is a name for this can anyone tell me if we have seen mdp before what is this called huh this called the bellman equation okay this is called the bellman equation so essentially now what is the problem the problem is to find the value function so these are all value functions okay now i'll call this as value function so if you can find the value function you are done uh, hello okay. sir yes Uh, this uh, calculation of this value function is kind of iterative, right? Because to find exactly. v n, we... exactly, yeah, it's iterative. Okay. Hmm? okay, is that fine? Okay. Uh, yes, yes. Sir. Yeah. Okay. Um. Um. If you look at, uh, for example, uh, the the general uh, thing, right? So. uh it's it's essentially you know it's iterative but uh, i can write this in in some fashion okay so any any other question hmm? any other question hello sir yes sir uh, sir by finding the value function what are we actually finding the opti the best uh, distance between two, 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 or... yeah you are finding the best average reward right so if you know the value function ho hope that you also know the sequence of actions that you need to take so those sequence of actions will, will result in the optimal actions right because you so just like 
it's like are we getting the uh, average squad that we can get after n uh, n rounds at state i sorry can you come again uh, voice was uh, said like is it is it representing the average maximum reward that can be earned after n steps at state i yeah starting at state i initially you are a state okay. i you take optimal actions sequence of actions um and if you look at the average reward that is vn star of i that is the average reward okay 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 is that fine okay so now uh, essentially um i can uh, i can write this whole thing in the matrix form also right so what is this this is i can write this whole thing see vn star of i right for each state i this is a value right so now i can write v okay i'll give a different color so v n star i'll define it as maybe v n star of 1 v n star of 2 and so on in general v n star of absolute value of s right which could be m this is a vector right so if it's a vector how do i write uh, this this thing i can write so again this expected value of r of i also i can write it as a vector right so how do i write this so it depends on uh, the action right so let me write this as r a okay r a is nothing but expected value of r of 1 comma a expected value of r of 2 comma a and so on expected value of r of mod s comma a okay this is the set of actions a set of rewards that you get when you take action a being in any of the state this is a vector right now uh, so i can write see v1 star v n star of i is this or one is this two is this and so on so i can write this as v n star is i can take max overall action a right that's what we have here right but expected value of r of i comma a that be 1 comma a 2 comma a 3 comma a and so on that results in r a the action plus how do i write this see this is over all j belonging to s right so if you look at this uh, you are summing over all j belonging to s pij of a times vn minus 1 star of j so it's an inner product of a vector that is the ith row of the p matrix or the pa matrix multiplied by the vn minus 1 star vector right do you agree so that means in this case if i are looking at i equal to 1 it will be p1j of a times vn minus 1 star of j that's the first row of the pa matrix multiplied by the corresponding uh, multiplied by the vector of vn minus 1 right and so on so let's look at that i can write this in a appropriate fashion this is p i'll write it as a okay that's the pa matrix this is the probability transition matrix times v n minus 1 star is that okay hmm is that fine everyone yes, yeah. okay so this is what you have so uh, well uh, v n minus 1 star uh, uh, is what you have okay this is the iteration right so this is how um it iterates okay okay now um the question now is how do you solve uh, this this particular problem to get uh, the sequence of actions okay that's what uh, we will uh, look at now hmm? ha so now um, if you look at the value right so uh, if you look at the long term behavior right what will happen let's focus on on the long term behavior okay that means uh, let's take n to infinity right so how does it behave right that's the question 
you agree uh, well um, the uh, other issue is uh, what happens if uh, n goes to what happens to the value if n goes to infinity it's possible that it can go to infinity right for example um the the values that you get um so if you look at the average reward that can be unbounded so what people do is they do what is known as the discounted reward okay so let me talk about that briefly and then we will uh, we will see what what uh, the discounted uh, reward is okay so let's look at discounted uh, reward average reward what is discounted average reward so the reward is basically what you are in s you take uh it's it's you are in some state i right let me call this state i as i t because t is the time index and you take an action a right so again this action a could be a t right so this is the reward that you get at time t now you have to average this with respect to um Uh, the randomness okay so let's be, before that let's look at the as uh, empirical so now i have to sum this right sum t from where to where hmm? let's say you start from 0 for example and go till t minus 1 okay this is the average reward until time t okay so and then you take the expected value of this well i can take the expectation inside also condition on the fact that at time 0 you are in state some s okay okay this is called the finite finite horizon case okay because i am only taking from time t equal to 0 to capital t minus 1 it's a finite horizon right okay so no problem here because even if r is let's say billion then you are taking finite sum so it is always finite right there is infinite horizon uh, case so it's called the infinite discounted reward okay what is the infinite discounted reward so instead of again the same story but i'll take r of it comma at so this is the reward that you get so instead of uh just adding i'll multiply it by a factor gamma t and then add okay d is equal to 0 to okay by now uh, you know what okay i'll eventually take capital t to infinity but right now i'll write it as is so expected value of this given i not equal to yes well uh, here uh, this gamma so i'll write in our new long to 0 comma 1 okay it's between 0 and 1 that's how i am going to so essentially what what i am trying to do is for example if t is very large let's say gamma is half t is let's say 1000 it will be like 1 by 2 power 1000 that means almost zero it essentially says that if you go forward in time you are essentially forgetting uh, it should be exactly the opposite but you are essentially forget there is some forgetting factor going on uh, here okay is this fine any questions is this fine or no hmm yes or no any questions pause here for some time and then uh, we'll move on any questions hello are you guys there i i i hope i haven't lost the connection no no sir we are we can uh, okay. we can uh, audible check your audible okay so rishab Are you fine with this? Mm, yes, sir. Hmm? Okay. 
Yeah. So basically, the reward is exponentially decreasing as we go. Like, yeah, you are sort of giving lesser and lesser weights as you move forward in time. Okay. Okay. So what happens is, you know, let's say ten years down the line, I, I don't care. I mean, for me, future is maybe two years. So beyond that, I'll the the coefficient that I'm going to put is very very small. Okay. That's what I'm saying. Here. Hmm? Okay. Okay. So now uh, the question is, so either in this case or even in this case, right? So we, um, how do you come up with the uh, iterations, right? So what do you think is the solution? Can somebody tell me how do you get this uh, whole thing? Hmm? So it's sort of iterating, right? So in the long run. Right in the long so run, I think, right? So uh, it will converge to RA in long run. No, let's look at some intuition, okay? Maybe the exact thing we'll look at that the analysis in the next class. Let's look at this. So we have V n star of i, right? You are in, this is nothing but max overall action a r a plus p a times V n minus one star of Uh, is it i or no? It's not i, right? So yeah, there is no i here. Okay, this is what we have. So in the long run, what happens as n goes to infinity? Well, uh, it's essentially v n star is same as v n minus one star, so it will be v star is equal to. Well, assuming I mean this is intuition or uh, very you know sloppy, but uh, we will make this more rigorous uh, in the next class. This is oh, there is no n minus one, right? If you take n to infinity, doesn't matter, right? See what it essentially says is if if some everything is nice and smooth, uh, eventually the value that you get is uh, is independent of time. So this is how the dynamics of your optimal value function, right? That's what it says. Now, how do you solve this? What do you think is the supposing this is the equation? How do you solve this? Hmm. How do you solve this? Hmm? What do you think is the idea? Hmm? What do you think is the idea? Hmm? Any idea? How do you solve this? Hmm? So we can substitute the value of v star in inside the equation. Hmm? What is that? So we can substitute the value of this v star in the inside. No, but we don't know v star, right? That's the whole thing. That's the issue, right? Okay. So now uh, the idea is this, right? So let's define. Okay. So this is again an idea. We will revisit this again. Okay. Define v of v. Okay. I'll define it like this. This is max over all action a. R A plus P A times V. Okay, so give me a value vector. This is how it looks like. Okay, so this is the function. In fact, uh, if I put P of V star here, I'll get V star. Right? Note P of V star equal to V star. Right? What is this this thing called? P is a function, right? So P of x equal to x. What is x called? Fixed point, sir. Yeah, this is called fixed point, right? Now, uh, how do you can you can somebody come up with an algorithm to figure out what V star is given this much of detail? Hmm? Can you, uh, Sumit? Okay, since you are in math. So you have a fixed point of a function. How do you find the fixed point of a function? Sir, we just uh, like what iteration method. We use the iteration method, sir. Like ah. from one step to another. Like we construct a sequence that okay. is just going down to that point, sir. Like, okay. sir. Now, well, will it work all the time? No, sir. There should be some conditions like the uh, iteration in 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 each steps. Their distance should uh, 
decrease correct but uh, what is that called in terms of fee hmm so like here we have to construct a sequence like uh, xn plus 1 is equal to phi of xn hmm. and uh, we just saw this sequence uh, like it's a cauchy sequence like sir we do in a banach fixed point theorem so hmm. we just uh, do the same procedure we define how to show that phi mapping has to be contraction mapping first of all yeah, this phi exactly. has to be contraction Lipschitz. yeah lipschitz right? Lipschitz, okay. yes, yeah. anyway yeah. anyway so fine so let's not uh, i think others should not uh, feel uh, you know um, uh, left out so let's look at value iteration so you might have seen this right so initially i'll take some v not okay some random v not i'll initialize this is how the algorithm looks like so first step is i'll initialize v not to v okay some v not is arbitrary so while um if you look at v minus phi of v okay maybe i'll take an infinity norm here it's greater than or equal to i'll fill the threshold uh, little okay i'll fill the threshold here but it's it seems magical but we can find the threshold later on okay epsilon do the following you just take v p of v. okay written p of v that's all so you take v0 compute phi of v0 that will be your v1 see v1 and phi of v1 is uh, greater than or equal to 1 minus nu by nu epsilon otherwise you repeat again you take uh, v1 compute phi of v1 associate uh, get, uh, you know uh, store it in v that is v2 uh, if phi of v2 is uh, v my v2 minus phi of v2 is uh, greater than or equal to 1 minus nu by nu epsilon then again take v2 and substitute get p of v2 which is v3 keep on doing this right so what is a fixed point geometrically let's look at this this is called the value iteration so i hope i'll try to do this uh, okay this is your y equal to x line okay so uh, value iteration essentially does what so if it is lipschitz um how do i write this lipschitz uh, okay this is some function okay um what is the fixed point of this function this is the fixed point right <laughs> so yeah this is x this is p e of x so this is well why it intersects with y equal to x line so x should be equal to y which is p of x which is x itself right so this is a fixed point right so now what is happening here so suppose i take uh, a point x0 right so what should happen is this correct uh, thing to do uh, anyway we will try so if it is x0 what will be phi of x not it's here right so oh, uh, i think this is not correct so let me just do yes okay maybe this hmm? is that okay so now uh, what will happen so uh, or i'll make it more skewed huh like this ah okay so now what will happen so you start with x not this will be p of x not but p of x not is what this height right the same height i have to take this this is x1 x1 is what p of x1 right p of x1 is this right this point is p of x1 but p of x1 i have to map it to 
this point here right this is x2 x2 is nothing but phi of x2 right that will be here and that will be very close to this keep on doing that until it converges to this point so if if it converges to x then if you put x on to phi phi of x is x you will get back x again substitute phi of x equal to x it will converge right this is the idea is that fine everyone that's what the value iteration is also doing so essentially you are doing this iteratively to find the fixed point and the fixed point turns out to be v star but the problem is um well uh, the function should be appropriate like this right nice function or lipschitz lipschitz right what is known as lipschitz otherwise this is not true so now our task would be what to figure out whether this function phi is lipschitz or not right if we can do that then we are done is that fine hello sir yes sir uh, can you go to the graph once hmm. yes so beyond x it is again like diverging from from y equals to yeah, x yeah yeah so i think uh, okay you are right i didn't write uh, this properly maybe something like this i don't know okay passes through like this it's lip sheets basically um, is this uh, is this figure uh, right sumit um, you might have seen this lip sheets right um, yes, because sir. Beyond... sir actually yeah. function has to satisfy that sir for any x y sir yeah. modulus of f of x minus no, f of y that is true, so less than equal of to x c minus v of y is yeah. less than or equal to some, some constant into minus x y. minus y yeah so this is lip sheets so that means you take any two points and then map it should be a contraction yeah so uh, yeah so basically that i think previous one is also correct right yes sir it just it like function f of x equal to 1 by x any function of type that one it will work uh, no the previous one But, what happened you should compress right so uh it should be less than or equal to x minus y yeah p of x minus u yeah that's it. the previous thing also works but yes sir. why is it diverging why is it diverging if it's slowly increasing and you take two points the difference is definitely smaller than some constant no sir the the, the 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 iteration we are doing over here no sir huh. uh, once it will get to this point the fixed point it will remain no, no, to no, that no. point only that is sir. true but if it takes to the right of the fixed point what happens that's what uh, i think i wish somebody asked uh if you take to the right uh mm. yeah so even this thing works uh, ish something like this works see if you take this point right see the, the value is definitely smaller so this value is always smaller than larger than this value so if you map it back you will come here okay then again if you take this you map it here it will come here and so on it will uh, come back to it will push you to the uh, left it will never push you to the right hmm? you understand right so i can give you an exaggerated uh, figure so essentially this is your x y equal to x line and let's say you have this okay now suppose i take point here okay x not what will happen p of x not is here right this one so that's where i'll come back i'll come back to this so this will get mapped to this so again it will come back to something like that it will go back and it will converge to the uh, fixed point is that fine i mean i have not written it properly but uh, the, you got the intuition right about yes. the lip sheets hmm? okay now how do you prove uh, lip sheets so first of all let's define what lip sheets is let f be a function i'll just define it for r into r but it is true for any function is said to be new lip sheets if for every xy in rn
f of x minus f of y what is less than or equal to some new times norm or difference of x minus y well um, you know uh, this is with respect to a particular norm okay we said to be new lipschitz of course with respect to this norm whatever norm may be right we say that this is lipschitz is this fine okay so now uh, the claim would be the following right so claim p of v to find above is gamma lipschitz therefore the value iteration converges to v star okay this is the idea you got the idea everyone yes sir yeah. hmm? jayant jayant yes you got the idea yes sir again i, I should watch this okay yeah. mandeep ah uh, yes sir i've got okay okay rishab uh the so same goes for me i have to do watch it okay uh you have any specific questions i can clarify you can watch and come back if you want or uh, uh yeah no, sir, no sir. i mean i have understood like i have to watch it again to like uh... hmm. okay are you fine sir fine okay uh, praveen yes sir i think i have to rewatch it sir okay fine no problem uh, okay so um, i think you rewatch and come back and we can discuss more about this i'll also um, um so there is one gap right so i haven't uh, filled that gap so this is fine this is n minus 1 and this is n i took long term right or and there i have defined the discounted and i have not connected the two right when how should we connect the two is the next question that we'll ask hmm? and then we will prove the uh, value iteration converges okay now um, looking at it from let's say those who are familiar with let's say data science what is the issue with uh, doing value iteration you are done right you have solved the problem essentially what is the issue what is the issue what is the issue uh, so, so maybe it take long time uh, convergence no. oh convergence is pretty fast so um th 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 this thing right this map i have to compute phi of v so what do you mean by computing phi of v you have to solve this optimization problem right do you agree you have maximizing or all a well in many cases this is also fine but what is difficult here is this is unknown in general right well if i knew then there is nothing to solve here right if you knew what is the probability transition uh, matrix i i mean there is nothing to solve there you already know because you don't know the probability transition matrix you don't know how to compute phi of e i mean you don't know phi and therefore you cannot i mean you don't know this ra plus pa times v and therefore you cannot maximize overall action here and that's where the bottleneck is okay now what do you do in this cases a naive approach would be you know just compute an estimate of pa for each a and then try to use that right that's one way but there are other ways of solving this problem called um, you know um, you, instead of estimating the probability transition matrix you estimate phi itself directly okay that results in what is known as q learning because this function is q okay is that fine everyone yes or no okay it results in um, class of algorithms one of them is q learning there is td lambda td0 and all that right so anyway so we will see that uh, briefly hmm? okay uh, i think i'll stop here uh, we will meet in the next class again with more details and more uh, arguments on 
uh, why it works and what is q learning okay uh, hello sir yes sir i have one question like uh, in markov chain while studying markov chain they are we didn't uh, uh, bring the notion of time we just uh, told that there are uh, some states and from one state to another state and uh, something like no, that no no so each time what do you mean by running the markov chain right it goes from one state to the other so the moment you go from one state to the other or you go from the same state to the same state right that is one tick that is one time slot or one time unit whatever okay, okay. Yeah. see you cannot always uh, associate uh, time with it right because the application itself uh, may not have time notion notion of time there then how do you, then what do you mean by time So by occurrence of some events or something like that. Um, no, uh, I I don't have a concrete example on top of my head uh, for the case where you don't have notion of time. But to keep things general, you don't talk about time. But you still say time, right? I mean, even if it's not uh, the actual time, uh, you still call it as time. Index n as time. Okay. For example, Markov chain x0, x1, x2, x3, and so on, xn. N is the time step. Zero, one, two, three are all time steps. You can think of it as time steps. Okay, sir. Okay. Yes, Savan, you had some question. Looks like you have raised the hand. No, no, it's not me, sir. Jayant. Is it Jayant? Okay. Oh, it shows to the right. Jayant, you have any question? No, sir. Okay. Um, yeah. So, if there are no questions, uh, hey, Savan, uh, did you send this link to uh, Pratik and others, or no? Mandeep is here. I I sent it to him, but he couldn't attend. He said so. He asked me to send him the recorded lectures. I okay. I did that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So uh, we'll meet uh, in the next class. That is on Monday. Uh, and continue with this. We'll see more about uh, about these things. Hmm? Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'll stop here then. Hmm? Thanks. Okay. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You have any question, Rishab? Uh, no, sir. No, sir. Okay. Okay. Um, if there are no questions, I'll stop here. Thank you. Mm, thank you, sir.